Hello and welcome to our webinar on access to capital and cash management. We're pleased you can join us today and we hope that the information provided will be helpful. I'd like to start by thanking our experts on the panel and welcoming them. Julie barker mers Regional President, Personal Banking, BMO Financial Group. Laura Didick, Vice President, National Lead, Women Entrepreneurs, BDC. Jennifer Cook, Corporate Lead, Women in Trade, EDC. And Sherry Griffiths, Regional President, Business Banking, BMO Financial Group. I'd also like to thank everyone who submitted questions for this session. I'll be asking each panelist questions that were submitted by you, our webinar registrants. Each panelist will answer questions for 15 minutes and then I'll shift to our next panelist. There were a large number of questions and we have done our best to prioritize by identifying common and more pressing themes to answer for you. We'll be working with our subject matter experts to create a document that addresses a wider number of questions and concerns. I will start with questions for Julie barker the government has put forward an economic relief budget. Will BMO be providing reduced rates for credit facilities, for example, loans, mortgage, et cetera, as a result of the stimulus package? Okay, great question. And good afternoon and good morning, everyone, depending on what parts of the country you're calling in from. Um, so let's first start with the with interest rates. Um, I will say that uh, this has been a bit of a moving target. Uh, for the last couple of weeks. And as of this morning, rates have again been reduced across the board. So beginning with the prime lending rate, now down to 2.45%, which is basically down to 2009 levels. And we do anticipate uh, further relief over the coming days and weeks. Now, what this means is that if you have any lending products that are based on a variable rate, such as lines of credit, and in some cases, mortgages, this is going to have a really good impact to you. For lines of credit, your minimum payments will go down. As the interest rates go down, you are required to pay less on those lines of credit and it will impact your cash flow. For mortgages, you'll begin to pay down more on your principal as a result of um, the drop on interest rates when they're attached to a variable rate mortgage. And that's always a really good thing. And I'm gonna talk uh, in a moment, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what you can do in cases of uh, changing your mortgage payments over time. So stick with me on this one. But for now, just know that if you have a variable rate product, your rates are going down. Now, in terms of credit cards, there are many different options available in the market. And if rates are a concern, meaning if you don't believe you can pay down your credit card payments monthly, then you are encouraged to look at the various alternatives out there and there are many and so take a look and you may want to switch into a different product option that will give you reduced interest rates they are out there and then this this covers um, in terms of the economic relief this talks about reduced rates on credit facilities and this will lead me into the next question so laura maybe i'll ask you to trigger the next one okay thank you what are my options for my personal debt, mortgage, credit card, and credit line? Yeah, so that one's directly tied to the first one, which is why they, they, they do kind of go together. Um, so to help you with immediate relief, banks are offering a six month payment deferral on loans, cards, lines of credits, including mortgages, when I say loans, with no fee and no changes to the terms of your product. So let me repeat that. We're offering up to six month deferral on loans, card payments, lines of credits, mortgages with no fee and no changes to the terms of your account. And this is across all financial institutions. This is a program put in place by the government that we've jumped on um, and, be and begun to implement. In fact, we are receiving requests, um, I think by the minute uh, on this one to defer. Now, a couple of things that are really important for all of you to be aware you must understand that a deferred payment does not mean a relief in your payment. It does not change the amount that you owe on your debt. You're still going to have to pay back the amount that you defer eventually plus interest. So this is really recommended for those people who need, who need a pause on their payments. They need to skip a payment knowing it's going to be added at the end. This deferral is available for all requests received prior to June 30th, 2020. So you don't need to jump on this if you're not sure you're going to need it. And you can select anywhere from one to six months at any time. You can choose one month now and in a couple months or four months, you can choose, you know what, I'm going to need another one or two months 
relief. And then, um, and then you can begin to, uh, to normalize on your payments. The only qualifier, um, at least at BMO, I understand that other financial, financial institutions have some variability in the qualifier, but the only qualifier at BMO is that your mortgage is in good standing and not in arrears. That's it. As long as you've been making your payments up to date, you qualify for the one to six month deferral on your mortgage and you simply choose what you want, what makes sense for you. Now, if your mortgage is in arrears, we have totally separate programs for that. So I won't go into that today, but what's important for you to understand is that you can defer your payments. A deferral does not mean forgiveness on the payment. It just means you're adding it on to the end. So I just wanna make sure that you're all aware of that one. Laura? Thank you. And how can I review and improve cash flow? Yeah, this is probably the, the, biggest, the biggest question uh, outstanding right now, especially for small business owners. Um, well, I'd suggest for actually all business owners is trying to, to manage that cash flow. Um, and on the personal banking side, for many small business owners as well, a lot of your debt is, uh, is um, uh, closely aligned to your personal debt. So I'm gonna give you a couple strategies other than what I've just declared. So we have talked about skipping payments. That is a very good strategy to manage cash flow. So let me start with that. Um, if you do need cash, use the options that I've described around deferring your payments. That is a very good option. Now, other options that are available to you that you may not realize is re-amortizing your debt or consolidating your debt into a term loan. And so I'm going to speak again specifically on the personal banking side. My colleagues uh, will share with you some other strategies later on in the call. But if you've got personal debt or mortgages, for example, you can do a couple of things. You can either do what's called a blend and extend to take advantage of low interest rates and lock in the rate for future years. And this could change your payments as well. This could actually change your mortgage payments. You can either break your mortgage and pay the penalty, get a reduced rate and re-amortize that mortgage. And you will actually change the cash flow. You'll change the amount of payments that are required for you to pay out um, today and into the future. In some cases, you may want to simply plan forward in anticipation of increasing mortgage rates over the next few years. And what you can do there is actually extend your rate, um, take advantage of the very low interest rates and lock it in for future years. So for instance, if you have two years left on your mortgage, you can extend it to three, four or five years using your current rate blended with the new interest rates to lock in your payments. So it's not just about planning for today, but it's also planning for the future. And these are really good strategies. Now, another option is to actually refinance your mortgage. So you can either take some of the value out of your home or what we call equity to unlock cash to help pay off other debt and take advantage of the low interest rate. So this is a really good option for those of you who have uh, homes that are mortgage free or perhaps you have um, appreciated equity in your home over the years, you can actually tap into that refinance your mortgage, which is the lowest uh, way you will acquire debt at this stage is if you take a mortgage backed loan. Um, you can have the lowest amount of interest on that, take that money out and pay down higher interest products and or simply take that cash to hold you off for the next two, three, four months, depending on what your cash, cash situation looks like. So that's the first one is to refinance your mortgage, to take equity out of your home, use that cash at the lowest possible interest rate to pay down debt or to use as cash to keep you going over the next few months. Another option, again, if you've had a mortgage for several years and you've been paying down your mortgage, you've been paying down your principal and interest payments, you can actually extend your amortization back to 25 years. So say you've had your mortgage now for 10 years, you've been paying it down, your amortization is now 15 years, you can actually re-extend it back to 25 years to reduce your mortgage payments. So that is also another great solution, keeping in mind that you may do this for a short period of time and you can easily get back to that 15 year milestone by doing lump sum payments when you have the freed up cash over the course of the next year, two or three years. And so amortizing it back to 25 doesn't mean that you're gonna now have a 25 year mortgage and it's gonna take you a lot of time to pay off. It just means you're using that strategy 
to help um, free up some cash, whether in your monthly payments or in actual dollars, so that you can redirect your money to other, uh, other parts of either your business or your cash flow. This is a great way to unlock cash for a short period of time. Now, finally, one last option. If you don't wanna to touch the equity in your home or just the remaining life of your mortgage, you can consider what is called debt consolidation. And so this is when you term out any revolving debt, such as credit cards, into one loan that you pay down over time. This isn't going to impact your cash flow, but it will put you on a path to paying down your debt so that you aren't simply spinning your wheels, paying interest only, and never getting ahead on your overall debt. This is a very good solution to help take back control in a period where you may be out of control. This could be something that you entertain in a few months, may not be something that you think about today. But term loans, term loans offer lower interest rates than credit cards. And it's a very good option if you're no longer using the revolving portion of your credit. So keep that in mind as uh, perhaps a, um, a longer term solution as you get through the next, call it three to six months. Back to you, Laura. Oh, Laura, you may be on mute unless we lost you. All right, I'm gonna assume that we lost oh. Laura. So I'm get oh, there you are. Um, sorry about that. How do I support my employees? Yeah, so this is another big one, and this, this seems to be changing by the minute as well, uh, with really good news from the government. Last week, um, as you all may have read, and if not, I'm happy to share the good news, the Canadian government announced some terrific measures to help businesses with their payroll. Um, so this is for companies who have payroll between $50,000 and $1 million. Basically, your business is going to get $40,000 interest-free until December 31st, 2022. So $40,000 up until December 31st, almost two years of interest-free loan. At the end of this year and a half, call it, if you pay it back in full by that date, you will be granted a 25% rebate, or in the case of $40,000, $10,000. So $10,000 right in the bank um, if you've uh, taken out the full 40. Now, if you don't pay back by December 31st, 2022, you'll have three years to pay back. Um, you'll be paying that back with interest, of course, uh, but at a reduced uh, interest, and it'll allow you to get your, your business back on track. There's a lot more to come on this program. There are many other programs that keep coming out uh, day in and day out, which is fantastic. And all of the banks are working really hard to put this in place for you. And as you can appreciate, this is all net new. This is not something we typically um, are involved in. So we're building as we go. When we expect that within the next two or three weeks, all of the banks will have an online option. There's going to be an online questionnaire for you to complete. It's going to be very simple and very quick. So keep your eyes open at bmo.com for more details as they become available. And we'll continue to keep you posted on any other new programs coming in from the government that we will help facilitate as an intermediary. Thank you, Julie. And your last question is, what are best practices with customers? Thank you. Yeah, this is a, this is a big one. I'm not sure uh, what was in behind that question. You may have had different ideas for um, whoever asked this, but I thought, I thought it would be a good one for me to draw on um, as much as someone in the customer experience business, as well as um, thinking of all of you as small business owners and how you can be handling this um, with your, your own ecosystem. So the first thing I would say is communication. In these times, you cannot over communicate with your customers. So not unlike what we're doing today with this, with this webinar, keeping your customers abreast of your own challenges and getting creative on ways to overcome any of those challenges you're being faced with will be key. I think this is where communities really come, to get, really come together and it's okay to, I think, show that vulnerability of the challenges that you have and getting some feedback from your customers. What do they need from you and how can they help you through this really trying time? This is a bit of a domino effect um, and I want you all to consider um, that everybody's got something that they're kind of losing and gaining as we go. And so consider renegotiating terms with your customers or offering 
something free or discounted service for them to drive loyalty. You better believe that four or five years from now, when your customer calls you up and they say, I stuck with you because of COVID-19, when you did this, this created loyalty for me and I will never, never let you down. Um, we still hear that as a bank for people who we checked in on in 2008, 2009, that they're calling us back now and saying, I trust you're going to take care of me. Um, and so think about that as, uh, as yourselves, as the consumer, and think about from the perspective of your own customers, what they need from you today and see how you can help out. There are a ton of free webinars floating around cyberspace right now and just a great opportunity to engage with your customers perhaps a little bit differently and so i think in times like these are both positives and negatives um, and it's pretty amazing what happens when we all come together and support each other during during times like these and so i encourage you to reach out and uh don't give up um, and keep working through the challenges that you have and create community around you and we'll all help each other through it so I'm going to close on that note, Laura, and I'll uh, invite you to uh, bring, it, bring on questions for my other panelists. Thank you, Julie. Um, I also want to note to those who are submitting questions in the chat that we will try to get to them at the end of this if we have time, um, but we will also reach out separately to answer if we can't get to them on this call. So I'll move on to questions now that were submitted for Laura Didick, who is joining us from BDC. Laura, there have been a lot of announcements by the federal government in regard to BDC support for SMEs. Can you tell me what they are and how to access them? Yeah, good afternoon, thank you. So BDC has both financing and business advice to help business owners get through these incredibly difficult times. And I'll talk about the financing programs first, um, but they're all very collaborative. We've taken a very collaborative approach with all the financial institutions. We're all, as Julie mentioned, we're all working together to help small businesses get through this. And so there's been four programs that have been announced by BDC just in the last two weeks. So I'll go through each of them uh, quite quickly, but encourage everybody to look at our website, to visit our website at bdc.ca slash coronavirus for more details and, uh, and regular updates actually, because things are changing, uh, I'd like to say daily, but it's almost hourly right now. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, is BCAP, which stands for the Business Credit Availability Program. It was announced on March 13th. And through this program, EDC and BDC are providing more than $10 billion in lending to help private institutions fill the market gaps in, in credit. So businesses that are seeking support through the BCAP program should first contact their financial institution, who they have an existing relationship with, and that the financial institution will assess the client's financial request and their needs. And if the client needs exceeds the support that, that the financial institution is able to provide, then the financial to institution is going to reach out um, to us and to EDC to access the additional resources that the government has made available under BCAP. So that's that one. Um, the second one is on March 18th, then, uh, BDC, we also announced an additional financing program for our existing clients, and these are working capital loans for up to $2 million with flexible repayment terms, and they're avail available to businesses that were financially viable prior to the impact of COVID-19. So if you had a viable business before and you've been impacted directly um, by COVID-19, and then uh, you may qualify for this. So if you are a BDC client, you should reach out to your BDC account manager and uh, talk to them about it. If you're not a BDC client and you do want to access this program, we do recommend that you do first contact your financial institution. And uh, because obviously you do want to be able to tap into BCAP and some of the other programs that have been recently announced uh, through the government initiative. So do talk to your financial institution. Communication is really, really key to make sure we're all on the same page and we all understand you know, who's doing what. And so uh, we're really recommending that you do that. So the third one I wanna talk about is also for, if you are an existing BDC client, um, similar to what Julie mentioned for BMO and, and all the other financial institutions, um, with our financing clients, we are offering a postponement of principal payments for up to six months on uh, the existing loans that you have. 
and this can be applied for, you need to apply for it because you know you may or may not uh, want it or need it. So you can apply for it by contacting your existing BDC account manager and uh, they will look after that for you. So finally, the fourth one I'm gonna talk about, it was announced on Friday and it's the small uh, and medium sized business loan and guarantee program which will also help financial institutions provide additional credits and liquidity options. And it's backed by BDC and EDC. So this program will operate under two lending streams. One is with BDC and the other lending stream is through EDC. Both are in collaboration again with the financial institutions. So I'll leave the EDC one up to Jen Cook to talk about because she'll be talking uh, after me. So, but the BDC one is a, a new co-lending program that will bring BDC together with financial institutions to co-lend term loans for businesses uh, for their operational cash flow requirements. So businesses may obtain an inc incremental credit amount of up to $6.25 million, and 80% of that money is provided by the BDC and the remaining 20% is provided by the financial institutions. That's how we're working together. And businesses that would like to tap into this program can access the program through their financial institution. Um, it, the announcement was just made on Friday, so I think they're still working through all the, all the details, but definitely, again, I think the moral of this story is to make sure you're working with your uh, existing financial institution um, and talk to them about the requirements that you need, and uh, then we'll all work together. So I've talked about um, the financing options. Those are the kind of the four that I've just talked about. But I also wanted to mention that we also have numerous free tools available for business owners to help them manage through this. And, you know, there's, there's the financing end of it, but there's also important topics like, you know, uh, business continuity and how you're going to go through this and, and updating your business continuity plan or developing one if you don't have one. So we have a free one on our website. Uh, we have cash flow. We have a cash flow planning tool on our website. We have lots of free webinars that may help you in leading and managing through this, all for free of charge. So um, they're on our website, bdc.ca, under articles and tools, the section called articles and tools at the top. And I encourage everybody to go through that and to see if there's anything there that can help you. So, Laura? Thank you. You didn't mention the New Canada Emergency Business Account. Can you explain what it is, who can benefit from it, and how to access it? Yeah, so I mean, Julie talked a little bit about this, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave some of it to, to Sherry. I believe Sherry's going to talk about it, but this is also a new program that was announced on Friday, and there's a little bit of confusion about it because it was kind of announced at the same time as the, uh, as the Small and Medium-Sized Business Loan and Guarantee Program that is through BDC and EDC. But this new program, um, as Julie mentioned, it's, a, it's an immediate $40,000 loan for small businesses. Um, and basically they can tap into a interest-free loan for small businesses in the form of a line of credit. They are guaranteed and funded by the government of Canada and it will allow small businesses to pay for rent and other important uh, costs that cannot be deferred. Um, and that's uh, what they're supposed to be used for. But this program is not administered by, by ourselves. It's not administered by BDC. They are administered through the financial institution. So um, I'll leave it at that and I'll let uh, Sherry talk a little bit more about it uh, when, when uh, she speaks to it. Thank you. What can I do right now while I wait on WorkShare to increase the chances of business survival? Yeah, so it, I mean, what I want to talk about here is your business continuity plan. And, and it's so, so, so important that, that you do prepare one. And as I mentioned, that you can go on our website and there is one there, but there's also numerous other uh, websites. I'm sure that you can access one, but we have a free one on our website. And the goal, if the goal is to help you sustain your ongoing operations and help you enable a recovery. So, you know, we, you need to consider 
uh, other ways to get your products and services into your company, into your customers' hands, if you can. And we've, you know, we've probably, you've probably all seen on LinkedIn and heard about some great things that businesses are doing, really, really innovative things from not only delivering their products and services at home, but finding, you know, kind of pivoting on what they're doing and finding other ways to getting um, the existing products and services they have into their customers' hands or altering their service offering a little bit to be able to keep a little bit of revenue going. And I think we all need to I encourage everybody to kind of think outside the box a little bit on that and see if there's other ways that you can uh, just get a, keep a little bit of cash going. And, you know, we all, have to, we all have to adapt. We're all adapting as we go. But that plan will help you, really, really help you focus on the priorities of your business and plan your future cash flow, which will help you then determine how much money you need to survive and how much money you'll need to then recover. Because recovery is very really important. And it's, in re it's really important to remember that each change that you make has an impact on your cash flow. So it's really important that you plan and implement changes in your businesses and that uh, as you do that, you're, you're, you adjust it into your cash flow plan and look at the effect that it will, those changes will have on your cash flow. And the business continuity plan is all part of that and looking at your employees and everything. Thank you. All of these government loans sound great, but will they bury me further because I have no work coming in the door? And how do I determine if I should take that risk? So we all know that uh, cash flow is king. And, you know, this is such, such a difficult question because I think the biggest challenge about um, the, the COVID-19 is that nobody really knows for sure um, when we're going to get back to, you know, what people are calling the new normal. And I think everyone agree, can agree that at some time um, we will be able to reopen our doors again, but the biggest question is is when and I think that's the biggest challenge when it comes to cash flow. So we're really encouraging people to develop a weekly cash flow plan um, and you may have um, a couple different scenarios for your cash flow plan. So, you know, what is it going to look like if you can't start if you can't get going for the next month or three months or six months. And, and, that, and, you know, I say weekly cash flow plan because you need to get down to each week right now. You can't be looking at annual. You can't even be looking at, at monthly. You need to be looking at it weekly. And we have, I encourage everybody, we have a great webinar um, on bdc.ca or on BDC's Utah YouTube channel that we just delivered last week. And it's entitled, How to Cope with the Impacts of COVID-19 on Your Business. And it walks you through step by step how to create your cash flow plan and looking at it and looking at what uh, recovery will look like because then you can it can help you assess whether um, you know when when those loans are going to become due or, or payment is going to start because as Julie said m many of them is you know all the banks are being super super great and, and deferring when they can and, and things like that but your payments will have to start sometime. So that cash flow plan that you refer to um, almost on a daily basis and it's on a weekly basis is gonna really help you look at what recovery will look like and what you can sustain and what you can look at. manage. So I do recommend everyone looks at that, rep, looks at that, uh, that webinar. The webinar talks about uh, you know, reaching out to your customers, reaching out to your suppliers, your employees, and doing a line by line review of your expenses because right now, every penny counts and it's amazing how even a little change um, can save you a few dollars here and there and that's not only with your existing debt and your existing credit arrangements but also just with uh, suppliers and customers and, and everything so uh, i do recommend that everyone looks out to that look at that webinar and then develop a cash flow plan and refer back to it over and over again Thank you, Laura. Um, I'm going to adapt this last question a little bit just because you've covered a lot. So the question was, what happens when this is over and how do I prepare? So to reframe that a bit, um, what, what additional things should people be considering about to prepare for when this is over? So I think, you I mean, the biggest thing here is, and I can't say it enough is, and I've said it before, is plan, plan, plan as much as you can and, and be agile. 
so you know you need to look at the different cash flow scenarios uh, work with your accountant or your bookkeeper and looking at what's possible and start to plan now for your recovery um, communicate with your your with your clients with your customers so when things start to turn around you will need to spend money to make money and so you'll need to plan on that and we're encouraging everyone to uh, you know to speak to their customers um, review your your personnel needs manage your operations plan frequently you know the one thing that we can probably all agree on is that our employees um, of any business is a business's biggest asset and um, in many provinces of the country, and majority of provinces in the country, we were facing a labor shortage. Um, we're not now, but we will in the future. And so you want to keep those employees, if you haven't been able to keep them on the payroll, you want to keep them close um, to be able to, to encourage them to come back. And like Julie mentioned, those, those customers too, those customers to come back. So, you know, communication, uh, clear communication um, is, is, really, really key here. And uh, because we will, as Julie said, we will get through this. Um, it's hard to believe right now some days that we will get through this. And it's really important that you work with your suppliers, your customers, your employees. And, you know, everybody wants to help everybody. I think that's the one important thing. And everyone is willing to help and, and we'll do what we can to get everybody through this because that's really important because at the end of the day, it's the small and medium sized businesses that keep Canada alive. And it's most of our employment. And it's so important that we all work together to keep them operating. Thank well, you, Laura. On that, Laura. Thank you so much. I'll switch gears now and pose questions to Jennifer Cook, who's joining us from EDC. Jennifer, how is the coronavirus affecting the global economy, and how long do you think it'll last? Thanks so much, Laura, and uh, hi, everybody on the line. Uh, great question. It's certain, as all of you will know, that travel restrictions, border closings, and factory shutdowns are all negatively disrupting global supply chains and slashing trade flows these days. In a span of less than a few months, it has really become the dominant force impacting the global economy. What's interesting is similar effects on the economy of widespread viruses have been witnessed in the past with SARS, the avian flu, Zika virus outbreaks, etc. Even as far back as records of the Spanish flu in 1918. In all these cases, while the effects caused great human loss and suffering, what's super interesting is that the economy proved to actually be quite resilient. What's common in all these cases, Laura, and especially COVID-19, is the speed of the spread of the virus, which came on as such a surprise event that no one even saw it coming. And so economic activity is interrupted really, really quickly and so pervasively that there's really few alternative sources of supply to keep things moving. No one had any time to really prepare for this. However, in these cases, the basic needs and demands of people are still there and are accumulating each day. And this is a fundamental difference from the financial crisis in 2008. History has shown that once the virus is under control and disruption subsides and productions resume, this pent up demand will be unleashed and the econo economic bounce back is usually fast and dramatic as well. There will certainly be some permanent impacts for sure, but once the money starts to flow again and most of what had stopped usually resumes and the economic recovery should also have a sharp rebound. So the challenge to the global economy and to Canadian exporters is ultimately dependent on, as we've talked about, as Laura mentioned, on how COVID-19 severity and longevity will be. Of course, these are two of the biggest unknowns at this time, which is most frustrating to businesses who are trying to figure out the best response as all the business flows, product flows and payment flows are disrupted and causing a cash crunch for all their businesses. Um, Actually, no business is in touch, untouched by this coronavirus. Even the largest of corporations, potentially some of your customers, will likely experience cash flow tightening. So at this point, although forecasts are always a moving target, EDC's 
economic team expects that the negative economic impacts for coronavirus will actually play out mostly in the first half of this year and the, with the bulk of the global recovery occurring between July and December with a strong rebound to growth in 2021. But that said, we'll be watching pretty closely for the control of the spread of the virus, which is the most important thing to reduce the economic effects. And as with all forecasts, I'm going to caveat that things are moving all the time, which may create different timing to these forecasts. Thank you, Jennifer. The next question, how should exporters best manage business risks during COVID-19 times? Yeah, so most importantly, it is for Canadian companies to protect themselves. They need to have a solid risk management strategy that enables them to be proactive rather than reactive to what's happening. So like the cash flow plan that, that Laura Didick talked about, I want to encourage businesses to think proactively about the strategies and the financial tools that are available to them and that actually you can leverage right now to manage risk and weather this storm. So when it comes to risk management, there's a few different areas to think about, and they can be broken down into four major buckets. The first is risk avoidance. So namely, do you have a plan B? For example, if you outsource manufacturing, are you planning ahead so you can start manufacturing locally? If you're selling internationally, do you have a diverse set of buyers or are you putting all your eggs in one basket? Given current fluctuations, do you have a good foreign exchange strategy in place? These are just a couple of things to think about um, when it comes to, to risks in your business. The second bucket is risk sharing. So again, are you outsourcing? Are you partnering? Are you only focusing on one product line or do you have multiple product lines so that if one of your businesses, uh, business lines, I guess, is impacted, it might not affect the others um, or it might reduce the negative impact on your business. So finding ways to spread or share risk are things that you could consider and evaluate. The third bucket is risk reduction. So looking at your contracts. We often see that Canadian companies are working with purchase orders and not actually properly structuring their contracts with real legal advice. In particular, for orders outside of Canada, this is super, super important. So do you have the proper clauses in your contracts that protect you in the case that you can't perform on a contract if situations like this arise? Do you have a contingency plan for working capital funds? Even if you're in a decent cash flow position now, it's good to have something in place for when you may need it down the road. The fourth bucket is risk transfer. And when I talk about this, I'm really referring to insurance. So for example, are you protecting your accounts receivable, which is often the largest asset on your books? If you produce customizable goods or services, do you have contract, contract cancellation insurance in place um, in the case that your goods get, your, sorry, your contracts get canceled once you've already started incurring costs? Things like marine cargo insurance, if, you're sh if your goods are being shipped by sea, or depending on your industry, there might be bonding or performance guarantee requirements for your contracts. Thinking about whether you're protected against potential wrongful call of these financial instruments is really important at a time like this. So I'd like to just spend two more minutes to talk about the risks of non-payment, which is really particularly top of mind for many Canadian exporters. Credit insurance is a tool to protect your outstanding accounts receivable against the risk of any payment defaults for whatever reasons, bankruptcy, refusal to pay, etc. And it's a critical, critical tool to protect your business. Even if your customers are large, stable corporates, as I mentioned before, even they may experience a cash crunch during this unprecedented time, which could impact payments to their vendors. Credit insurance can be structured to your business's specific needs and ensure that you get the right coverage to mitigate the risks that are tailored to your business. It can also help you gain a deeper understanding of your customer's credit worthiness if you're able to insure them. So your insurer can actually provide really critical information about your customers in this regard. If you're dealing with higher risk markets or with riskier buyers or sectors, it's important to ensure that your insurance company has the risk appetite to support you in those markets and sectors. And I just wanted to mention that um, there are many private insurers out there, but EDC does offer several insurance solutions in this regard, which can be flexible options to meet your company's specific needs. Back to you, Laura. 
Thank you. Um, just looking at the time, and because this is a multi-layered question, this may have to be our last question for you, but I'll, I'll just monitor during the time. Will EDC be adjusting any of the requirements that have been in place in order to provide added financial funding support? What sort of covenant release can we expect? And will EDC guarantee bank loans? What about IQ in Quebec? Yeah, definitely a loaded question. Um, <laughs> as has been mentioned over the last week, the federal government has announced several measures, right, that to help Canadian companies joke, uh, cope during this time. And EDC, along with BDC, has been asked to play a really important role in helping address some of the ongoing and developing economic challenges that are stemming from COVID-19. As financially stable uh, Crown Corporations, we're here to help companies in good times and in bad times. And so we're working really hard to adjust our supports as quickly as possible to respond to companies' needs. EDC's immediate focus has been during this time to bring more liquidity into the market in order to help Canadian companies manage the, cha manage the challenges they're facing with this cash crunch. And last week was the start of several announcements um, on what EDC is doing specifically. So as of today, there's three things that I wanted, sorry, four things that I wanted to tell you about. Um, and first and foremost, in order to transfer the benefits of the government announced credit support to Canadian exporters, all of our products have been adjusted to be more flexible. So what that means is we're expanding the capacity of our existing financial solutions and flexing our risk appetite both for insurance as well as for the trade and loan guarantee products, which are effective immediately. So in partnership with our Canadian financial institution partners, we're actually adding additional credit support as well as six month payment deferrals on any fees to both new and existing clients as they relate to our guarantees. We're also working to streamline our underwriting processes so that we can speed up access to cash flow relief and increase flexibility in our overall credit appetite. Uh, for our insurance customers, um, so for any insurance customers on the line that are with EDC for insuring accounts receivable, in the short term, we're making immediate changes to our insurance solutions. We're, when we're assessing new buyer coverage, uh, we're working on taking greater risk than we have in the past, as well as expanding our maximum coverage for certain uh, select credit insurance. We're increasing flexibility to continue coverage where possible in situations where a buyer's credit is already deteriorating. We're also covering losses for goods shipped, even if the buyer hasn't accepted the goods, subject to some terms, which was not part of the credit insurance coverage previously. And we're actually waiving the 60-day waiting period for claims. Um, I do want to note, though, that all claims will still be closely evaluated according to the regular claims guidelines. As Laura talked about, um, on March 24th, EDC announced its initial support through the Business Credit Availability Program, um, being called BCAP, uh, for small and medium-sized enterprises. And as BDC is offering this as a co-lending solution, EDC is going to be offering um, the banks a guarantee on loans of up to $6.25 million so that companies can access cash more, more quickly. And these loans will be 80% guaranteed by EDC to be repaid in a year. And so pretty impressively, eligible companies that are impacted directly or indirectly by COVID will be able to up obtain up to 12.5 million through both the BDC and EDC lending streams together. Um, again, you know, this is all being offered through the financial institutions. Um, as it would have been really impossible for EDC to scale up fast enough, delivering these solutions through the Canadian financial institutions who are already working with Canadian companies is the best and fastest way to get the funding to companies. So, you know, the banks are taking um, some time to get up to speed really quickly and operationalize these programs. I think over the next few weeks, they'll have them fully operational. And I know uh, we're running out of time, but I did want to make one last um, point out one last thing that was in, announced on Friday, as Laura mentioned, as part of the government's announcements on Fridays, was that um, the Government of Canada also temporarily expanded EDC's domestic pow powers to further help Canadian businesses. So what that means is that 
it's a broader mandate for EDC that gives us the scope to provide all of our solutions to all Canadian businesses now, including those that are not necessarily selling internationally. We're going to be working really closely with BDC and the financial institutions so that this increased support can help even more Canadian companies. I think I'll leave it there for you, Laura. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And I'm sorry we didn't get to the rest of your questions, but I do have to move on to Sherry. And now we have our final panelist, Sherry Griffiths with BMO. Hi, Sherry. Are the Hi, banks Laura. open to lending money? Are the banks open to lending money if the ratios are in line given the current uncertainty? Thanks, Laura, and thanks very much for my fellow panelists. I actually think they've done a great job of actually laying a pathway for some of the questions I have, quite honestly. And this one in particular is one. Just listening to what Laura and Jennifer spoke about around the programs that are being put in place to help manage the risk. This is why I would say we're very confident in saying we are open to lending money. Obviously, each deal, each transaction that we look at is going to be different, but with the options of managing the risk in different ways. This just means that we are able to still continue to lend money in the current situation. Obviously, we do need to take a look at things a little more closely and really understanding what the business looked like pre-COVID and how much time it will need to get back after everything settles down and having a good plan of what that looks like, being able to really sensitize any analysis of what, uh, what will happen as to the best of our abilities, obviously there's a lot of unknowns right now, will play a big part in us looking at transactions, but we are definitely open to lending money still. Thank you. Next question, should I request the maximum number of payment deferrals I can, uh, I can upfront for my business loans or only what I need immediately and call my relationship manager when my need for capital increases? When should I increase my operating line of credit? Thanks, Laura. I think very similar to what Julie spoke about on the personal side and small business side, I would echo a lot of those comments in this section here. I think you should have a conversation with your bank and look at what the maximum number is available to you. It does not hurt to ask for that. And then should things change in one, two, three months, four months, and you wish to start making payments again, you always have the option to do that. So it makes sense from my perspective to ask for the maximum if that is something that's concerning to you. I think a lot of this depends on your cash flow and really understanding your numbers and how far out you will need the deferral. Obviously the question right now that everyone is faced with is how soon will this change or how soon will I, will I be able to operate normally? And because you don't know the answer right now, my recommendation is to talk to your relationship manager Go ahead and ask for the maximum deferral, ask for the increase to the operating line. Most banks and certainly ours, we have a very streamlined approach to this right now. So the, the speed and ease of doing this um, makes a lot of sense to do it while you can. Um, and then should you need to change that because things have gotten back to normal, you're welcome to give us a call back and we can fix that at any point. Thank you. So this is another dual question with contingency planning how far out do i look and when should i take action with a letting staff go and b selling a building yeah and again i would echo my panelists comments here both laura and jen spoke about cash flow and really understanding your numbers working with your partners talking to your bookkeeper or accountant and making sure you have a clear understanding of what your cash flow is from a weekly basis to a monthly basis and I think you have to look out, from my perspective, at least six months right now to see where that takes you. And it helps you have a good plan as far as what you might need to do and what decisions you might need to make. I think it's really important that you understand the viability of your business when things subside and what that might look like. We are seeing examples of businesses taking turns and completely shifting what they were doing prior to after and things look very differently when you make those decisions so i think having a really detailed cash flow will really help you figure out what this contingency plan will look like and whether or not you need to make decisions about letting staff go maybe perhaps consolidating your debt selling buildings any of those types of questions um, you need to be able to see out with cash to understand what your needs are Thank you. This next one is also based on cash. So how do you bridge when you know cash is coming in, but you're not sure when? Yeah, no, it's a great question, especially right now 
with the amount of benefits and opportunities that are being put in front of us right now, a lot of business owners are calling to say, I know that this is coming. I just don't have the funds today, but I need this in the interim. I think my first recommendation with this is to reach out to your banker and have a conversation with them. All of the financial institutions have been partnering with the government through a lot of these solutions. And so we're really clear in knowing what this time frame might look like for when some of the cash might come in as an example. And so I think having a conversation with your bank will help you figure out what options you have, whether it be things like payment deferrals or increased operating lines, consolidations, all of those things are on the table, especially if you have a good plan and you understand what you're gonna need and when. So my suggestion is ask for the help, make sure you have the numbers and information you need, and then have a conversation with your bank to figure out what you need in the, in the short term. Thank you. And your last question, Sherry, is in light of Friday's announcements, do you know when the 40,000 announced by the government will be available through the banks? Yeah, what's great about this, I'd like to say, is it's unprecedented to have, unprecedented to have all of the banks aligned on making sure that we all have this available as soon as possible. Um, both Jen and Laura spoke about we do have to work through processes behind the scenes to get a lot of these different programs up and running. With the, specifically the one for the 40,000, the, the emergency business account, this one we're putting a high level of focus on. And right now from a conversation I had this morning with our senior folks at BMO, I know in conversations with the other banks, they are really looking to have this in place uh, towards the end of next week. Um, again, take that uh, with a grain of salt because right now from a technology perspective, that's really what we need to focus on is being able to get an online application up and running pretty quickly with an attestation that allows us to fund this. So it's just a matter of timing for all of the banks to get that done behind the scenes and to be able to make the process smooth and easy from a digital perspective. I know a lot of the questions, and I think I saw one in the chat room as well, are, are really what the criteria is for this. And as uh, Julie shared, just to clarify, it is for, for business owners who had 50,000 to a million dollars in payroll last year. And the other criteria would be that your business was in place prior to March 1st. Those are the only criteria that we have at this point. And so the online application will likely form an attestation of some form that will allow you to attest to what you need to for us to be able to fund this. So it, it, it really is, I'm very hopeful that we'll have this in place by next week. Um, but at the same time, I think that uh, you have to have some patience with all of us to make sure we get this lined up and are able to do it effectively. Thank you, Sherry. Um, that was that is the um, summary of all of the questions that we have. So thank you, Sherry, Jennifer, Laura, and Julie for all of this great information. This brings us to the end of our time. The final slide includes contact information should you wish to contact any of the panelists. We'll be posting this webinar on bemoforwomen.com should you wish to access this information or share it. Thank you for joining us and be safe and keep well.